So the next couple of weeks are going to be outright insane. I just drove from Philadelphia down to Dallas. I'm here for the Drone Deploy Conference. Then after this, we're going to be in Vegas for Airworks, and then Arizona just for kind of a personal thing. I'm going to be meeting up with some family. But regardless, a crazy two weeks of awesome spots to fly my drone. So why don't we first start with some epic drone footage I shot here in Dallas, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Drone Deploy Conference and why the future for drones looks really awesome. So I'm actually back at home now. It's just so much easier to go to the conference, capture a bunch of video, write down some notes, and then come back here in the quiet of my own studio and share my thoughts with you. There's nothing worse than trying to film on the show floor, especially if you're trying to capture audio. It just never goes over well. Now, I quickly want to give a shout out to the city of Dallas for being one of the most fun cities that I've been to to fly my drone. That highway system right there that kind of goes around the southern portion of Dallas, right in between the Trinity River and the city itself, uh, 35 and 30, kind of where they converge, was one of the most epic spots that I've been to in a city to fly my drone to capture aerial views. I got some great hyperlapses and, of course, some great video clips. But enough about that. You guys already saw all that footage. Now let's jump into my recap of the Drone Deploy Conference here in 2022. So the venue was the Sheraton Hotel in Dallas, and it was all the way up on the 47th and 48th floor, giving everyone there a great view of the city. We heard from Drone Deploy engineers and staff in the beginning about their company, what they're up to, what's coming in the future, more on that in a second. And the breakout sessions that were hosted were well attended with really insightful discussions about how Drone Deploy is being used right now across various different industries and how it will continue to evolve. They also hosted some outdoor demos with the Mavic 3 Enterprise using the RTK attachment, which is something that I'll have a video covering very, very soon. Probably my favorite part about the conference, though, was following Spot around the floor. It's super impressive to see a robot like this that's actually being sold to the public and is actually being used in useful scenarios. Now, just as a little backstory, I've been using Drone Deploy since 2016 when I purchased my very first drone, the DJI Phantom 4. I remember just kind of browsing the App Store and finding the Drone Deploy app and thinking, hey, this is pretty cool. I can automatically program my drone to fly missions, to capture capture data and then process that data into a map. I mean, look, I didn't know at the time what I could use it for. I didn't know how powerful the software was, but I downloaded it, I tried it, and it was just fun to see the drone fly itself, do everything that it needed to, take off, land, it was really awesome. And it's really cool since then to see how far Drone Deploy has come to not only integrate drones, but so much other forms of data from other cameras like your iPhone, 360 cameras, and those ground-based robots like Spot. Okay, so now moving into the main portion of this video, Drone Deploy opened up their conference with a keynote, kind of like a state of the union in regards to what they're doing as a company right now and where they hope to be in a couple of years from now, showing off some great new features and showing off some impressive data. So with that said, I don't think that this PowerPoint presentation has been shared outside of the conference. I asked Drone Deploy, can you send it to me? Can I put in my video? They said, we would love you to. So it's pretty cool that I get to share this with you, even though you guys didn't go to the conference. So again, this is kind of like a recap as to what Drone Deploy shared with us in that opening 
keynote. Now, this PowerPoint presentation was like 75 slides, but I shrunk it down to what I believe is some of the most important information. Also, I wish that I could have taken more video during that keynote because I wasn't as good as a lot of those presenters up on stage, but hopefully I can give you the same effect. So they kind of started off with some numbers based on like what we as drone to pull users have done with their platform. They showed that we've captured 7 million pieces of data. And I'm trying to remember whether that's like area measurements and volume measurements or actual maps itself. But regardless, they shared some very impressive information about what we as drone to pull users have done with their platform. Now, moving on from there, they kind of showed like the progression of drone deploy, right? So remember, I started in 2016 with drone deploy and they were just a drone mapping platform. But since then, they've moved to be a drone data platform. And that kind of allowed them to start taking um, or giving you the ability to take photos and videos and panoramas all there within drone deploy. So you never had to leave the application. You could fly your drone in a sense manually using drone deploy, which was awesome to see. And you could automate a lot of your missions. For me, I was doing a lot of construction work using drone deploy, kind of setting up waypoints and making sure my drone took photos the same exact spots for each time that I visited the site. And now they're moving from being a drone data platform to a reality capture platform. So they're moving from the air down to the ground so that you can capture everything using cameras, import that into drone deploy and kind of create like, I hate to say it, but this metaverse space, right? Like this area that has been taken from the real world, put into the digital world and you can explore it just like you would in that real world. Now, personally, I am a small drone service provider located in Philadelphia. I service pretty much the entire East Coast as long as the pay is good. And I'll also travel out West for people that I really enjoy working with. But it was cool at the conference to hear how some larger companies were integrating drone deploy into their everyday operations. So we heard from a lot of great representatives from Turner Contractors, so in construction. We also heard from a lot of great representatives from BNSF Railway. This was probably my favorite, being able to see how they're managing their assets, their railways, their training cars using drone deploy and just drones in general. And we also heard from um, the guys at Sunrun and how they're using drones to pretty much make a 3D model of all of the roofs that they end up putting solar panels on top of. Now, as Drone Deploy makes this switch from being just a drone data platform to a full-on reality capture software, they shared three different sections or three different pillars that are important to them as a company moving forward. And I find them important as well. So they are unification, automation and intelligence and kind of breaking those down, right? Starting with unification, they want to give you one piece of software that integrates with a lot of pieces of hardware to give you that single spot to capture and analyze your data. And that is like a godsend, right? Because I hate working with people and then having to share photos from one app and videos from another app. And hey, here's a link for the drone map. And hey, here's a link for the measurements, right? You have all of these different applications, all these different links, unifying that into one spot just makes things much easier. Now, on top of this unification, they also want things to be automated so that you, as the person that is capturing this data, doesn't need to think about it, right? So whether you send out that spot robot and have it automatically go through your job site and capture photos, or whether you've got your drone above your job site capturing a bunch of photos from the air, they want everything to be automated so that you don't have to think about it and that data is there ready for you. Automation is something that is music to my ears because I like being able to run these drone deploy missions, push a button, watch the drone fly, land, and there I've got my work done for the day. Now, moving on from there, this is probably something that's a little bit further out in my opinion, and that is the AI intelligence. So it's like, you have all this data, great, right? You have all these photos, all these videos, but like, how do you make use of it, right? How is that going to be useful to you? Because you could look at this great 360 video of the job site and say, yeah, looks great, but what can that tell you, right? And they've got some great information on here. Like for example, having uh, say the spot dog on the ground, walk around the job site, look at all the pressure gauges to make sure that everything is in line or they're showing here, I'll zoom in here, showing that this person is wearing a safety helmet. So you can monitor safety from the air using drones, again, using artificial intelligence. And that's pretty cool. Now from here, the presentation was kind of broken up into five different subsections. So we heard from these five different speakers. The first was about drone flying. The next was about 360 capture. The next was about automation. The next was about data analysis, I believe. And then the final one here was about earthworks, which as somebody that does a lot of stockpile measurements was something that I was probably most interested in. Now, they shared some more information. This is pretty awesome. 1.5 million total flights accomplished within the drone deploy software. That is just mind boggling. Look at the map too. I mean, of course the US is kind of like dominated by uh, drone deploy, but also look down in South America, look over in Australia, look there in India. I mean, there's drone deploy missions being run all over the place. And that is awesome to see. I mean, 1.5 million flights, 
That's pretty mind-boggling. Now, this was another big piece of information, and it was the fact that the Mavic 3 is now compatible with Drone Deploy, or Drone Deploy is compatible with Mavic 3, vice versa, however you want to look at it. I've got my Mavic 3 Enterprise here, and I cannot wait to use this with Drone Deploy because it's got great battery life, it's got the mechanical shutter, it's got an awesome camera. So this, in my opinion, is going to be the best mapping drone, and they kind of unveiled here at the conference that it was compatible, even though there was an announcement on the day of the Mavic 3 Enterprise um, launch. It was still great to see that this is going to be compatible with that drone. The software is compatible with the drone because we've been waiting for a while for the Phantom 4 Pro to be replaced. This again is just kind of another picture showing like, hey, you know, we've got drone deploy running on the RC Pro, which is awesome. Now, moving on through the flight section of the keynote here, remember drone deploy has been doing this for years. So there's really not a whole lot new to go over except for like the drones that are not compatible with the software. Um, I will say that they did make improvements to how the 3D models are made and rendered and processed within their software. I mean, look at how sharp and detailed that 3D model is of that tower. So they really have done some great improvements in terms of like the 3D modeling. They also gave us some improvements, again, in terms of like the artificial intelligence that they're using or the way that they're analyzing these photographs. So with this 3D model, yes, this is a 3D model. It looks tack sharp. It looks like a straight up photograph, but it's pretty cool that you could annotate the 3D model, show the actual photo of that area and point out what's wrong in this specific area so that when you're going and collaborating with your team, people know what to look for. Now, moving into the next section, this is all about 3D tours, 360 walkthroughs. So this is kind of bringing this new reality capture future into light. So here you notice uh, this is this Genu, Genu construction company, and it's showing how they're using the floor plan option to upload their plans into drone deploy and then use this software to kind of annotate like where 360 photos were captured. And I kind of have a couple of different slides here that show that. It kind of shows like the little map in the bottom corner. We continue to go through, it shows that map, it shows how you can place those 360 photos in specific rooms. I think I've got one more here. No, so that was it. So being able to use these floor plans, uploading them into Drone Deploy, and then being able to navigate through there and see photos of those rooms in real time is really an awesome thing to have here built in to Drone Deploy. And again, as I've mentioned, it's kind of bringing that whole reality capture thing to fruition, bringing it from just being that drone data platform to now a reality capture software. Now to dig a little bit deeper into the 360 photos and videos that are uploaded here into Drone Deploy software, they've made some changes on the back end in the software that improve how the images look within Drone Deploy. So they have their artificial intelligence being able to analyze the image to see where's the sky, where's the ground, where's the person, right? So that's pretty cool. And if we go to the next slide here, it actually shows that now we have new cameras available and compatible with Drone Deploy, like Insta360's new One RS. It's their one inch 360 camera. So that's going to give you much better images in low light and using drone deploys tweaked algorithm. It's not going to give you that better image in those low light scenarios, which is really helpful because drone deploys used all the time on construction sites and the lighting is usually pretty horrible on construction sites. So you can see here the difference between before and after using this new software, using the new hardware, it's going to give you a much better looking image. Now the next section or the next speaker that came up on stage discussed automation on the ground. Here we have Spot, the robot dog, walking through an oil and gas facility. And if you look at kind of like the diagram on the left, it's basically showing that you're gonna be able to use these ground robots to walk through a job site, tell it to take photos of specific things, specific objects, and then continue on to the next object. So right here, specifically on an oil and gas facility, it shows that you can take photos or have the drone the robot in this case, take photos of specific gauges and then move on to the next one, which saves a lot of time for people, actual humans, to have to walk around and analyze these for themselves. The robot can do all the work and you can just pull up drone deploy and see all of that information, which is really cool. And automation is really going to be the future. I mean, we already have it here with drones and I think that we need a little bit more tweaking to get to where it's like fully automated. I mean, right now with the FAA in the United States, you're not able to fly out of line of sight. So you technically can't just have the drone fly by its Itself. So once we get past regulations and once this technology improves, automation is going to be key. Now check this out. This is an interior 3D model. This is the point cloud, but Drone Deploy was able to show us a little bit of their indoor 3D beta. So basically an indoor 3D model. It takes that exterior 3D modeling and brings it inside again, giving them one step closer to being
using a full reality capture software. This was actually a GIF, like a moving image when we were looking on the screen while we were at the drone deploy conference. But because I've got the PDF version, it's just like a static image. But just know that when this indoor 3D option comes out, I'll definitely be testing it. I'll definitely share it here on the channel. And again, this just brings us one step to full reality capture of both, both the outside and inside of a building. This is really, really promising. Now, the final speaker that came up on stage discussed Earthworks. We'll move on to our slide here. And this is something that I am probably most excited for because I do a lot of stockpile measurements, as I just mentioned. So if you look at this small little picture here, which I will blow up now, we can now see 3D contours directly within Drone Deploy. And we can also see an elevation view while seeing the 3D view of the model or of the map that you're looking at. So before, if you wanted to access your elevation view, you needed to look at the 2D top-down image. But now you can toggle 3D model as well as elevation view. So you can manipulate that model, look around, and and see how high or how tall a specific object is while also looking at the contours right in drone deploy. So this is something, again, I'm probably going to be using on the daily. So even though this might be very inconsequential, they put it at the very end of their conference. This is something personally I am most looking forward to. And these are just kind of some other things about stockpile measurements. And I think that that's pretty much it. There we go. That is everything that I saw at the Drone Deploy conference. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed walking through some of the most important parts of the conference here with me. Drone Deploy 2023 is something that I'm definitely looking forward to because this is a software that just continues to evolve. It continues to improve. And seeing how far they've come in just six years, I can't wait to see where they're at in 10 years or 20 years. I mean, being able to fully reconstruct something, make something that's in reality digital is going to be really, really fun to do. Anyway, guys, thank you so much watching let me know your thoughts on the drone deploy conference in the comments below and as always i'll talk to you later peace